Hi friends, welcome to Annie's Pink Chair where we bring real raw relevant issues to the table from a woman's perspective with wit and wisdom. And boy, do I have a beautiful friend on today that is prophetic, she brings wisdom, she's a woman of God, and also my friend Dr. Mary Crowley is producing an amazing documentary called Freedom Cry for Sex Trafficking. She also does a show called Now Is The Time on a podcast, and it's absolutely incredible. And I want to introduce you to my friend, Mary. How are you doing today? I'm so glad you're here. Hey, this I has been forever to get you on the show. <laughs> well, I'm just living the dream today. We're you just, gorgeous. you know what, this is a time. Oh, thank you. Well, so do you. Thank I love you. your pink chair. <laughs> You'll be I, here I think soon, you're hopefully. To, I think you're supposed to give me that chair. Girl, I got three of them. <laughs> and I can tell you where I got them. Aren't they cute? No, no, like, no. I don't, have, I don't have room for a chair yeah, right now. I love it. But so I like this chair. Tell, tell me, um, I can't remember this, but I met you online, I think, the first time. Well, I met you through Lisa. That's how I met you. But I knew that when I first talked to you, it was like a total connection and, and like I said earlier, I felt like I had known you like most of my life already. Like you totally get me. And it's so weird, but people don't know this and I'm about to tell them, you are from Minnesota, Minnesota girl, <laughs> which is so cool because I really feel like there's an anointing out of Minnesota for people to rise up and not be what Minnesota says we're supposed to be. I, I feel like there's a spirit there of, you just have to be who we say you are in our state. You can't act out, you can't stretch out, you can't you know, leave our, our area, our, our region. You have to be a Minnesota girl. And I feel like you and me, of course, too, have stepped out of that realm and said, oh no, we're breaking this bubble. We're leaving this place. And not that it's a bad place because we love Minnesota, right? So I don't even know why I'm saying this, but I just see a well, very strong Annie, anointing on your life. I have a lot of, yeah, I have a lot of brothers and sisters. I had seven brothers and sisters and a lot of cousins. Um, my maiden name was Jensen. And, you know, Minnesota, the, you know, it has 10,000 lakes, don't you know? And we don't, don't really talk know? like that. That's just, that was a Fargo movie. There's some people that talk that way, but we don't, but I do feel a really, um, a chemistry, you know, that God connected us. So that's what God is doing now during these times, Annie, he's connecting people. It's connecting people. So it's a good thing. It's yeah. so I feel really connected. So I'm excited because there's a lot of alignments out of confinements that God is bringing and we're coming into the greatest show on earth. So it's going to be fun too. It's going to be fun. Yeah, can you tell really us fun. a little bit about your background, just shortly, like because it's it's really amazing how you, you know, came out from Minnesota, but you also went to. I'm really interested in your, the way you were brought up in. You were in Catholic school, right? Tell us about that. Well, my mom and dad um, were were Catholics, and in, in the seventies, um, they actually got involved in the charismatic movement in the Catholic Church, and uh, so you know, I was one of these party girls. I mean, I would get home at, at the time they wanted me to be a part, you know, come home and all that. So I wasn't like a really wild child, but I loved people and I loved parties. And I used to go to um, Catholic school in many, in St. Paul. And then I went to um, an all girl private school. And we used to give the nuns hell. You know? so <laughs> it's, all, it's all in my book when God speaks a woman's journey of faith. But, you know, we would do stuff like remember one day, my friend Donna, said, you know, she, we were in the hallway and she goes, Mary, look at this fire alarm. And then she was doing like, a, she was pretending she was going to break it, but she actually did. And so the whole fire alarm went off and they were doing like a rehearsal for one of the plays that they were having, you know, at the, at the school that weekend. And so all the fire trucks came and, uh, you know, Donna and I ran into the bathroom and we were just laughing. We, I, I never got, you know, in trouble, but Donna did. So we were constantly getting in trouble. Um, and so, but then my, my family ended up moving to Bloomington and I had to go to this, you know, public high school, which I've never gone to private schools. And so 
I mean, I would go into the, I didn't want to be, I mean, they had the freaks and the jocks during this time. The jocks were kind of the kids that played like sports and the cheerleaders. And I kind of wanted to be more of a cool kid. So I started gravitating to like the music and, and the freaks or the guys that would go to parties and we'd get high and, and things like that. I never really did hard drugs. Sometimes I did speed once in a while. It, the white process was way back. But, you know, it was like my mom and dad, in particular my mom. And for those of you guys watching, if you have praying parents or you're a parent and you have children that are out there, there's nothing more powerful. And I feel Raini right now that there's some people watching that really their kids are out there. And God, you know, put together a Ways and Means Committee that he orchestrated this, you know, unbelievable um, trajectory that he brought me into uh, when I was going to college. I was actually going downtown at Minnesota School of Business. And I know that you actually worked at IDS I Center. Did. I, I read it before. <laughs> and so I was working at Baker's Life Endurance. And the girl who was the receptionist had just become a Christian. And she used to ask me, uh, Annie, where are you going to go when you die? And being raised Catholic, I go, well, probably purgatory. <laughs> she said, well, there's no such place as purgatory in the Bible. And I go, really? That was my get out of hell free card. I go, I go, I might be blonde, but I'm not dumb. And so God started putting people everywhere I went. And to one day, you. you know, we were yeah. eating. Yeah, one day I was eating downtown at Dayton's. Remember that salad bar? Oh, I and love Dayton's salad bar. Oh my gosh, in the basement, right? Like you go down the escalators, best snacks, everything. Yeah. Yeah, so the salad bar, and she said to me, Mary, God has a call in your life. And because God had already started, you know, bringing so many people telling me about God, it was like a light bulb went off in my brain. And I said, Diane, I want to accept the Lord. And so you do not have to beat people over the head with a Bible. God is the one that is drawing them by his spirit. So we went yeah. back to the office and I prayed and I knew that I knew when I got up that God started retraining me white, black, you know, right, wrong. I went through this whole learning curve and I came home and I said, mom, I accepted Jesus. And she about had a heart attack because <laughs> she was thinking I was going to come in through her prayer meetings or ever, you know, and, and I never did. It was through God's ways and means committee. So you know, and then, you know, I, I got, I jumped right into stuff because I'm kind of one of those people that jumps in. I don't just kind of like, you know, put my toe in the water and kind of, no, I jump. And that's where I, I'm at right now. I'm jumping into the water. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I could go on for hours talking about stuff, but, you, you know, know we're in I a I wanted to ask you, what's the name of your book? You just said it earlier. It's when called God when, God, when God Speaks. When, yes. One Woman's Journey of Faith. And, and you can get it on Amazon. Um, it's been published twice. My um, publisher died of a heart attack, you know, in his 40s. It was a widow maker, really a bad situation. Then I had another publisher that picked it up and I added four more chapters. But I have two new books coming out. Um, you can get both of my books. You can go to Amazon um, or you can go to my website under um, marycrowley.com. My name's right in the middle of America. M e r i c r o u l e y dot com and um, uh, the book When God Speaks is on there or on Amazon. So, but I have yeah. two books coming out. One of them is called Freedom Cry, and you're in this book. You're oh, in this book. Right. That's, that's right. right. I wrote a chapter in there. Very unique, by the way. I did it different than the book that I wrote. I have your book, the one you gave me, and I'm excited because that's my weekend reading material. I started reading a little bit and I was like, no, I'm going to read this this weekend because I totally want to concentrate on it. And what is, because you said this is where God has you now. Let's talk about where he has you now. Like, what are you doing? And then number two, this is the fun part. You know, you love this part, Mary. What is God saying? Yeah. Well, so, what I'm doing now, I mean, I've, my, as many of you watching this, you know, since the pandemic, I call it. Um, you know, God told me, Annie, you know, when, when COVID first started happening, the Lord spoke to me and he said, COVID-19 is Christ overcoming victory in disease, Psalm 19. And I was never afraid. I mean, right from the beginning, California was the first state that shut down. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it was just Governor Gruesome Newsom. I mean, he was tyrannical. I mean, shutting down the businesses, a number of things that were horrific. But um, I started traveling. 
uh, right from the beginning. And I woke up on May 2nd, 2020, if you really look at that as 222, and and I woke up and um, God said to me, we won't shut up until you open up, open the heavens. And then he told me to do seven baptisms along the Western seaboard, starting at Pirate's Cove. And Pirate's Cove is a place in Corona Del Mar right next to Newport Beach. And it's, you know, a place that Errol Flynn used to make his pirate movies. And I think back in the day, like years ago, Gilligan's Island was actually made around that area too. And, uh, but in 1970, I'm working on actually a motion picture about the Jesus movement and a a hippie named Lonnie Frisbee, who was the catalyst for the Jesus movement, but died of AIDS in 93. So I've been on this Mm -hmm. project for over 12 years, four writers, but um, Lonnie was this hippie preacher that used to say, um, because a lot of people like you and I didn't necessarily fit into the mold of what a Christian should look like. And right. um, Lonnie had a, a saying, which I never knew him back then. He'd already, he'd already passed away. But he used to say, and the church is, is for lo- so long as expecting a certain mold of what a Christian should look like and what a Christian should say and what a Christian should be. And then he said, but God is blowing everybody's minds because he's saving the hippies and nobody thought a hippie could be saved. And so I've been working on this project. You know, I believe that God's going to start breathing upon this because we are going to take back the media for the kingdom. And uh, Lonnie said, told his ex-wife who I've interviewed on my program that what the hippie was in the Jesus movement, God was going to take the LGBT community It was going to breathe upon them. I feel an anointing on this right now. And that they're going to be some of the greatest evangelists. And, and, you know, the fivefold ministry, God is going to really use the LGBT community. um, Because Lonnie had been molested when he was eight years old. And he tried to tell his mom and stepfather they didn't believe him. So in 1967, that was the summer of love. Because, I, you know, I'm a historian. I research history. When he goes up to this mountain, you guys outside of Palm Springs, it's Native American land. And Lonnie's father, who was very abusive, was 100% Cherokee. And Lonnie had dropped LSD many times. It was the whole Timothy Leary turn on, tune in and drop out. And he dropped LSD and he says, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. And he said, "Uh uh-oh, the atmosphere of the canyon started to change. He goes, I didn't want to be there because God started shifting. He knew something was happening. And he sees a vision of the Pacific Ocean filled with people in darkness. And Jesus appears to him. I feel God's heart right now. And he says, Lonnie, I'm putting a light on you to reach lost people. Same time, you know, Annie, there was this pastor, Chuck Smith, little tiny church, goes to Mesa. 17 years he was thinking of quitting because his little church wasn't growing. And him and his wife, Kay, used to go down to Laguna Beach and they'd watch mm. all these hippies lining the streets and Chuck would shake his middle-aged bald head and go, dirty hippies, why don't they take a bath? And it was the heart of his wife, Kay, a mother that said, Chuck, don't say that. We got to pray that God's going to reach these kids. So God connected their paths. I'm not going to get, it's a long story. And, and Lonnie was hitchhiking one day and in Chuck Smith's daughter's boyfriend picks up Lonnie, brings him right to Chuck Smith's door and the rest is history. See, we're at this time right now, Annie and everybody watching that God is setting the stage for the greatest show on earth. You know, people are like going, what are we going to do? You know what? God is not afraid. He's up in heaven laughing knowing that we now have to believe that nothing is too hard. The giants in in the land, like David ran at Goliath, and he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? We're not going to be afraid of this COVID. Yes, it is a bioweapon manufactured out of Wuhan. It was, it was meant, and you, I don't, you know, whatever you guys believe in, it doesn't, I know I interview a lot of people. We honor, if you took the, the jab, I mean, that was your prerogative, prerogative, but don't force people into taking right. something. Yes. And this is a season that we're going to see these giants come down. And then we're not going to just knock them down. We're going to take their sword and cut off their head. I mean, not actually in the natural, but in the spirit. So. Yeah, we understand. Anyway. So that, yeah. that's so good. And the other thing is, is when you were talking about King David, you know, 
a lot of people say, well, I'm not qualified or I haven't had a lot of experience and I don't know how to stand up. I don't know how to believe and, and share my beliefs with other people. The world is so crazy right now. The United States is so crazy right now. But yet King David, God anointed him. You know, Samuel anointed him with oil, but he was a shepherd boy that was watching over these sheep and fighting off bears and lions or whatever else he had to fight off. And when you said that about King David, it just reminded me what God said, I will prepare, you know, in front of your enemies, a table. And it's like David, I think he understood that more fully than a lot of people because everyone was afraid of that giant. And if we can just understand that God has every area covered when we step out in faith and obey him to do what he's asking us yeah. to do. Well, you said shepherd, um, boy, years ago, I was, um, I was up in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and God gave me an encounter with him uh, in a dream where Jesus came to me and uh, kissed me, brought me into an encounter in the castle of the Lord. And then he took me, he said, we need to go out of this castle. And, and so I said, yes, and we got on this white horse. I was riding for you know quite a while. I looked over and I saw this green, lush grass. And I saw these fat sheep. And I knew that they were sheep you know, eating grass. And I asked the Lord, what's that? And he said, that is my church, but I'm not there. And then he said to me, will you go with me where the other sheep are? And I said, once again, yes, I would go because the Lord will lead. He won't push. And so then he took me, we drove for quite a while until we got to a thicket. We had to get off the horse, went down the steep embankment. Then I'll never forget when I saw, I saw Jesus lovingly go over. They had these sheep, but they weren't all fat and huddled together. They were isolated, one here, one there, one there, because the most severe alcoholic drinks alone, does drugs alone, kill themselves alone. They're isolated. And that's what COVID-19 tried to do. They tried to mask you and isolate you and shut the church down. And literally they tried to control what the narrative was. But Jesus, during this, this vision I had, he lovingly went over to the most pathetic looking sheep, gently opened up the snare and picked up this little sheep in his arms. And then he rolled back his head and he laughed and he looked at me and he said, shepherd girl, help me. And so Jesus called me shepherd girl. He wanted me to help reach these lost sheep. So some of these lost sheep, Andy, can be living in mansions in Hollywood or Beverly Hills. It's not just because they're broken, poor, and in the gutter of the streets. This is people that just don't know God. So those of you who are listening today, I feel like what is God is saying to you. Mm. He said he's called you this year not to fear what God said to cheer, for this is the hour that you will revere and you will see his power. And the enemy called devour is now going to go sour and he's going to put these stones in your hands to bring you into these promised lands that you will now go and you will demand that you will call these sheep back home into the father's house. He said, get ready. He doesn't want you to be silent like a mouse, but he wants you to go and say, look what the Lord has done today. So he's called you kings and he's called you queens. And he says, now is the time that you will dream. So dream on, dream on, dream until your dreams come <laughs> true. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You know what? I, I, that is so good. I love how you rhyme and I, how, how God just gives you the words right before you say it. And you're just, you didn't, and just to let everyone know that's watching and listening, she did not plan this out. I've never heard her say that before. <laughs> right, Mary? Confirm that with me, please. Cause well, yeah, no, what happens is God just gives me, he gives me these rhymes. I just hear it. And, and it's yes. a prophetic gifting. I've been prophesying a long time, but I always say God can talk through a donkey if he wants to. So, you know, we're not legends in our own mind. Um, we are servants and we are shepherd girls and boys, and, and we are just there to be about our father's business. And that's what we're called to do, Annie and I. We're called to reach those ones that, you know, whether they're in Hollywood, whether they're in Vegas or whatever city around the world that you are, God is looking for you. He will leave the 99 to find the one that was lost. And that's what I love about God. He will leave the 99 and go and find you. I, I feel right now, Annie, that there's some people watching this that are far away from God. 
and mm-hmm. because they don't like the religion religiosity what they see because mm-hmm. sometimes the church you know can tend to shoot their wounded one strike two but three are out so there's millions of people that won't even go into a church any longer but see god believes in you there's one young man i see and um you know you've been tormented and you've been struggling with addiction and i know i had addiction to alcohol and it's just a few years ago actually i mean see you can drink wine every day well this is what i was doing as a christian i'm saying well you know a little wine for your stomach's sake and before you know it it was a bottle a night and then there came a point annie that god said no no you can't drink like this anymore one wasn't one wasn't enough two was too many and so i had to lay that on the altar so I, and, and I haven't, I don't drink, but I'm not saying it's wrong to drink wine or a glass or something, but I'm telling you, we have to follow what God is saying to do. And God can deliver you from, from that obsession. You know, they call it an obs- mm-hmm. obsession of the bo- uh, obsession of the mind. And it becomes an obsession. You know, I used to hide these little bottles. Like, I go, why am I hiding little bottles? Like it was so weird, but I'm being raw and real because you know what? Sometimes you see these pastors or, or people on these pulpits and you'd understand some of them have more problems than you. And uh, we're, we're not there True. to judge people. We're there to help. So that's just a little you know, merry so message. I, I hope that person, I'm just going to encourage that person that's listening. And, and there's many people listening and watching that he is our answer. And sh- you're right on the money with that you know, people trying to hide. You don't have to hide what you're going through. There's people here that care. You know, I care, Mary cares. Mary, let's talk about, because we only have four minutes left, girl. Let's talk about that documentary that you're working on with trafficking. And then how can people get- Yeah, you know, four you? years ago. Yeah, um, four years ago, I went to Thailand. I came back and God said, no, I don't want you to talk about Thailand or overseas. I want you to talk about America. I started doing this documentary called Freedom Cry, Sex Trafficking in America. And so we actually had an event at the Anatole that Annie and there's like 10 other women that was there. It was an amazing event. But, uh, you know, Annie actually is going to have a chapter in my book called Freedom Cry, Women Fighting Trafficking. So if they want to get a hold of me, they can go to my website under marycrowley.com and Mary spelled M-E-R-I-C-R-O-U-L-E-Y.com or womenfightingtrafficking.com. Because, um, you know, we're there, my director uh, that I've been working with for a long time, Fred, um, he was with me at the beginning of when I started, you know, doing things on on the air around the world. He's probably produced 2000 TV shows with me. We were in the final stages of edits and then he died suddenly of cancer. He didn't tell me how severe it was. So I lost my my oh, friend. Right. And so we're, we're finishing up that. But let me tell you what, what seems like, that you've lost, God is going to give it to us back again. But, um, you know, just, they can get a hold of me at my, my website, marycrowley.com and, uh, or womenfightingtrafficking.com. And can they donate to your project? Can we have them direct them to donate to help you finish everything you're working on? Yeah. Well, thanks Annie for that. Um, you know, if they want to contribute, I said, anybody that donates a minimum of $500, I mean, they could give any amount, but any amount helps, but, uh, Mm -hmm. $500 $500 or more, their name will be, or their brand or their business will be in the credits of the, um, the end credits of, of the film. We still need probably another, you know, I'm not sure exactly. I've got three different editor directors that I'm, I'm, you know, talking with getting quotes from, but, uh, you know, God's been bringing in money, but I'm telling you, if you donate, um, just go, it's going to a worthy cause because, you know, Annie and I, I know that we're supposed to be working together. I want to help with her dream, dream house and destiny house. And God is teaming up people now. It's dream teams. So uh, right. yeah, they can go, go to marycrowley.com and we, I have my own merchant account. They can go to cash app. It's under, um, you know, Mary Crowley, you know, and Venmo to Mary hyphen Crowley. So, but most people just go on to my website and donate. It's a secure website. So thank you if you do. I'm, it's a real blessing. Yeah, we, we really appreciate it because we're partnering with her as well. And we really believe in everything you're doing, Mary. And I wanted to share with you that I got one minute left. Ugh. I saw you on the Hollywood sign in one of the O's and you literally had the Supergirl outfit on with the red cape. 
and the wind was blowing in your hair, but then I saw the cape get really big and it covered all of Hollywood. It was a red cape. Like, and God was saying, I love Hollywood. I love everyone in Hollywood, working in Hollywood on the movies, the shows, all the networks. I love Hollywood. So just if you're listening right now and watching, I feel like that's a word that, uh, that needs to be heard right now. Christians don't hate Hollywood. We don't <laughs> because God loves Hollywood. But, Amen. Well, thanks yeah. for having me, Annie. And, and thanks all of you. And I do yeah. have a podcast. You can go to YouTube under Mary Crowley or Rumble. Most of my stuff is on Rumble now because um, I can't put a lot of it on YouTube. It'll be taken down. So just subscribe and, um, you know, hope to, hope to you guys can be involved with what we're all doing together. Yeah. Thank you, Mary, for coming on today. We're going to have you in person next time. Okay. So I can't wait to see you and hug you. And thanks for coming on Annie's Pink Chair. Come yes. On. And I'll see you soon in Vegas. Yes. I'll see you soon, girl. I can't okay. Wait. Okay. Right. Yay. Love you. Okay. Bye guys. Love you all. all right. Love Bye. you. Bye. Hi friends. You know, when things aren't going our way and when life seems hopeless and everything's crashing around us left and right, it's just so easy to give up and lose our hope. But listen, if we have hope in God, we will surely never be disappointed. It says, may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's Romans 15, 13. And at Destiny House, that is why we are so joyful to bring clients in our program. Ladies have been ravaged by sex trafficking because we know if we can show them that their lives are not over, that there is a brand new day when they wake up the next day and they get to start again, that God's mercies are new every single morning. We see ladies come out of this terrible, terrible tragedy of sex trafficking and into a life of hope, promise, and peace. And that can only be found in God's love. We cannot do this destiny house without any of you. We need your support. We need your help. Our program to our ladies is absolutely free of charge. But the only way we can do that is with your partnership. Do you know that every dollar that you give to our program is used for our programs and the care of our staff and our ladies? So if you'd like to donate and partner with us, you can easily go to pinkchair.com com and just click on donate. And by the way, your gift, if it's one time or a partnership every month is tax deductible and God will bless you as you give to those who are less fortunate. Thank you for partnering with us.